つながっているやっぱり俺が王様になって止めなきゃ頑張ろうと思いますねほらそれでは先生ヒューマギアって何ですか六つの核Welcome to Kamen Rider Black Man. Whew. Today, we will be looking at the Kamen Rider Reiwa, the first generation movie, the team up with Kamen Rider ZO and Kamen Rider Zero One. Now, and normally for a movie review, I would have like a whole script out that goes about seven pages. And actually have like a first take of it, but in that take, it's me. It's me going over, going through the whole plot and slurring my words quite a bit. And I decided I didn't want to use that take. So instead, I'll be do. Instead, I'll be reviewing the movie in a good, bad, and oh dear God, it's awful type of way. Except I'm replacing oh dear God, this is awful with the mixed. Because there, there are some good parts of the movie. There are some bad parts, and there are some details on it that I'm mixed about. So let's start off with the good, the premise. Now I've seen this movie twice already, and I appreciate the premise of the movie. And the premise of the movie is that human gears have taken over. Because of a time jacker, another one, and I say another one because it's the same thing like in Heisei Generations Forever, where a time jacker is screwing around or whatnot, and so so yeah, this time it's another time jacker that is screwing around with the timeline, and she creates a new timeline where the, where the human gears are in charge. And they're trying to eradicate the humans. And in this set timeline, Ames has become a resistance band. And where the Zeo writers play in this, it's that it affects their timeline as well. And so they go find Aruto, and they all team up to basically bring everything back to normal. Now, I like the premise that the Now I like the premise that it's in reverse. The human gears are the ones that that are in charge, and the humans aren't. I think what makes me appreciate it more is that how terrifying it actually feels. Not just because robots have taken over, and if they see a human, the first thing they're going to do is kill it. I think it's because of how terrifying this movie actually makes it, and I appreciate. I think what drives it more is the one of the villains of the movie, another zero one, which I will get to in a little bit. But yeah, I think with how terrifying it genuinely, this actually makes it, it's actually quite appreciated. And also, kind of how realistic it is with some human gears actually having prejudice. But one thing I will get into a little bit later is that, or at least for right now, actually no, for right now, it's that the prejudice and wanting to eradicate humans whole thing with the human gears, it's kind of one-sided. But in this one part where. Izu has been well. The human gears actually find their Ames's hideout, and they threaten to kill everyone. And there's a child hostage involved. Izu actually sacrifices herself and is going to be executed. And when Aruto comes to save her, he he reasons with everyone about why human gears and humans should coexist together. And pretty much showing why he is a common writer, and that's the moment where they all take up a vote to see who should be president of Hidden Intelligence, and some vote for Aruto. And I appreciate that moment because 
up to that point in the movie, it's just been it just felt so one sided. And when Izu actually sec stands up for Aruto two, it shows the other. It shows that it's not so one sided from other Human Gears perspectives as well, since Human Gears are people, and not everyone has the same opinion. And so it's much appreciated there. And so, oh dear God, I've talked about the premise so much. I'm going to talk about, let's talk about the main villain of this movie that makes, that kind of makes it for me when I think about what he's fighting, his motivations the entire time. Another Zero One, who is the president of Hedon Intelligence in this new timeline named Will who was the last president's assistant, but once he, this all, now, this all goes back to 12 years ago in 2007 when there was going to be a satellite launch and Will tried to, Will tried to get into, hack his way into the satellite and by the will of the Ark, there's going to be a signal turned on for human gears to go against the humans. That's what Will was going for. And it actually doesn't go off as planned until the time jacker shows up. And oh, I just saw a squirrel. Squirrel! It doesn't go off until the time jacker shows up and offers him the powers of zero one. Well, another zero one. And with that, the, his plan to make human gears go against the humans go off without a hatch and he kills the last president so let's talk about the design for another zero one it's not bad this suit is actually much appreciated if only because the grasshopper motif it's shown excellently well here in a monstrous type of way, which is what another writers are. They're a monster version of common writers. And I like how, I like how, I like how the grasshopper motif is shown. I also like how some of the aesthetics is close to rising hopper, zero one's base form. All around, it looks like a good monster form. It's, Ugh, especially the face. And Will is actually a different type of villain because he he's, how do I put this? He's kind of like Magneto. He's fighting for Humagear's rights. And one thing that he asks, that he actually asks the last president is that if human gears will be working to make humans smile, what will the humans do in return for the human gears? Which is not a bad thought, really, since human gears are higher intelligent robots and they couldn't gain, well, sentience on their own. And so them wanting to not have second class citizenship that is something, honestly, to think about, because let's be honest, there are good and bad human gears out there. Yeah, I got a text message. I'll read it afterwards. Anywho, so, <laughs> anywho, there are good and bad human gears out there. So, if possible, if they would agree to coexist, to coexist, that's possible that they can have rights to vote and such. And I guess it would be pretty fine. Um, yeah, I know that's a bit of a brain fart right there, but I don't know. It was just, it's just from what I took of it, I thought, you know what? Uh, you do kind of make a point, even though he yeah, makes a point. Now, another thing that's in the good, the drama between Aruto and his dad. Now, if this movie does anything, it works. It totally works for Aruto because 
because in the show, I don't think we've ever really, I don't think the show ever actually gets into depth about what happened with his dad. It shows that he died protecting him, but it doesn't really go further than that. The movie actually does so here. Of course, Aruto, well, lost both of his parents at a young age, and his grandfather created a father human gear for him, and he died protecting him. In this, it's an alternate timeline where his dad actually survives, and he actually gives him, which brings him another thing too, since when Aruto, the movie begins with Aruto late for work, and when he's there, he is threatened to be killed by Will, and he transforms into another Zero One. Aruto transforms himself, and he gets curve stomped immediately. And he even loses the Zero One driver, and all he has is the Rising Hopper Progress key. And a little bit later in the movie, once he meets Ames, like his father gives him the Force Riser, and he uses his Grasshopper Progress key and gets a new form there, which he uses throughout the movie. So let's talk about that other form, which is Zero Zero One. It's, it's not so, it's not so bad. It's a lot more black than yellow, and it's a lot more bulky and restrained. So I do get the idea of it. It's, not, it's good. It's not, oh, well, it's not so bad, it's good. Hello, while re-watching this video, I just realized I forgot to mention that Aruto's dad is a common Rider, common Rider Ichigata. So let's talk about his suit. Personally, it's okay in my opinion. I get where they're coming from with the colors. It's based off of Ichigo, well, at least his first suit. And it's okay, that's about it. I totally get where they're coming from with all the callbacks with his driver being called the cyclone riser and when he presses the button for the progress key it says common rider and so on and that's about it now back to the video now like i said this movie does aruto totally justice because he's fighting for humans and human gears rights and he agrees that they should all coexist. He goes about it so much in this movie that it is amazing. And what further supports it is, of course, his relationship with his dad. As we learn in the movie that his dad actually worked with Will. And his dad was actually against Will's idea of wanting human gears to take over humans. Because... What Aruto honestly ever wanted when he was a kid was for his dad to smile. And that's what his dad was working for. He wanted to create a world where him and his son can smile together. And the villains in this movie apparently take it out of context. So it just makes it all seem like a big misunderstanding. <laughs> but you know evil, it's too crazy to think about it and just still go about it. But yeah... It just, it feels great. It's just, it feels great, and it is great. When Aruto learns about it, it kind of warmed my heart a bit. And so, one more thing that's going to be in, actually two more. Well, never mind. I was about to say, I'm looking over my list right now of what's going to be in good and what's going to be in bad. And... It's just going to be something that I'll just further my point for when I for when we get to the bad. The last thing for in the good, the cinematography. I don't think I, I don't really ever talk about the visual effects in movies or in general. It's like the cinematography in this movie is shot pretty well. Like I like some of the I like some of the bird's eye view shots that are pretty swift. And they complement the fight choreography very well. Speaking of which, there are some good shots of fight scenes in this movie. 
they're all pretty swift and relate to each character as well styles with fuwa he's his preference is using power with yaiba she's more tactical and with hirobi he's more cunning and the cinematography totally complements that and god damn it i'm almost out of water eh. <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, so now on to the bad. This movie with Zero One, this movie is confusing with Zero One's place in continuity because, like I said, where the Zio writers come in is that their timeline is changed too with Yuma Gears trying to attack them. And so they need to go find Aruto. What's weird about that is that. Even it, within the show, they live in a world where these, with our, with all the characters from Zero One, they live in a world where they coexist with Huma Gears, and Zio is in the main continuity, which is right now, and we have yet to coexist with robots. Like, so that's a bit confusing. Because even by the show's logic, Zero One takes place in, an, in its own separate universe. So why this movie doesn't well do that is it will leave people confused immediately. And so, and my point's even further proven when everyone time travels back to when this all began 12 years ago. And what year was it 12 years ago? 2007. And the last time I checked, there wasn't an, a robot uprising when I was eight years old. So, furthering my point. Oh, but which brings me to like another thing that I did not know was going to be in the good or the bad or not. The first attempt when they go back in time to stop the event. That was honestly a good idea. They wanted to travel back in time to stop the launch from happening. But unfortunately, that plan fails. But I do like the good attempt, though, because Aruto learns more about his dad. And they also learn more about the villains there, too. And it's fantastic. It fails, but once they get back to the present, they just destroy the monster and everything gets reset. So that's fine there. What's not fine is another Ichigo. It's basically a another writer version of Kamen Rider Ichigo. And it makes no sense. And it makes no sense because why is there a Showa era another writer in this movie? Which is about essentially the Reiwa era. And with Zio and and with Zio in this movie, also Heisei. And you want to know another thing about this too? The way another Ichigo is created is that the time jacker, Finis, which is what the wiki says her name is. Yes, yeah, spoiler alert, the movie never says her name. Not once. Anywho, Finis steals Sogo's. Well, she steals the writer powers. From Sogo and create and becomes another Ichigo. And by writer powers, I don't even know what she means because would would she mean the Heisei common writer powers? Obviously, probably not, because well, obviously not, because she is she looks like a Showa common writer. And just to further my point about the writer powers crap, there's like Sogo could transform into Grand Zio. So what the hell writer powers did she ate? Did she take? I wouldn't know she ate any to become that form, but yeah, my word flubs. So yeah, the and it's it's the same reason why I didn't like some of the Showa Common Rider aspects in the Over Corsair movie. Like, they have no place in a movie about a different time period. 
especially because they now if they were written in to be involved that would be something but they weren't and over Corser, i feel like that movie was just lambasting heisei while this is just talking about showa well actually yeah it's just in this in over Corser, it sounds like like if you ever seen the over Corser movie it'll just sound like some showa writer fans were just lambasting heisei and in this they talk about it feels like they're talking about show a common writer so much it has no place here because it's a movie now about the heisei era and the reiwa era so what does common writer ichigo have to do with any of this now which brings me to what i'm mixed about in this movie the show a common writer aspects that they actually show now the show a common writer aspects that they actually show they basically all refer back to the first common writer that now how do i even go about explaining this they basically, yeah, they refer back to, like, the first common Rider, Ichigo, and with how Zero One is the first, and how it's a new era, and, the, and how Zero One is the first in that era, they really do hearkening back to then. But which brings me to another thing about this movie that I'm really, that even right now after watching it twice, I'm not too sure about its perception on what a common writer is since and it all starts with when will was create no when will and when will and aruto's dad i forgot his name were actually creating their own common writer and it it's a weapon to further support their goals now the movie, it has such a black and white perception on what a common writer is. Is it good? Is it bad? And it freaking, it nods back to like the first perception of how common writers started. Like the perception being that common writers are either monsters or they're good guys. There's no middle ground what common like literally even actual superheroes have middle grounds superman he he came to earth after his planet was destroyed when he was a baby batman his parents' death made him darker and actually want to do something about what was happening in gotham and i'm trying to think of more examples freaking freaking black panther his dad died and now he needed to step up and rule his country as well as be a superhero even those even regular superheroes they have a middle ground from dark beginnings and common writers are no different they start off being something used for evil but because of their own will they were able to do something different and make a change and fight for people. Like, there's no black and there's no white. It's just gray. And the movie is just saying it's either one or the other. When really, it's just, it feels so off-putting because in the because going into this new era of Common Rider. It feels like this is what they're trying to install in the viewers. That common writers are either good or they're bad. When really, it, I'm not saying that common writers are neutral, but it's that common writers are gray. They take in the good and they take in the bad to continue fighting for good. And that's all there is to it. And now for another thing in this movie that I am mixed on. 
And that is when Aruto inherits the title of Kamen Rider and how he does it. And how he and how he does it is that he has to fight his dad and freaking kill him to get back his his zero one driver and officially be become the president of heated intelligence and actually gain the title of the first of the Rewa era. That moment, like the fact that Aruto had to kill his dad just to get all of his stuff back and become a common writer officially in this movie. I immediately kind of don't see this movie as canon because that was one of the most, it's on my list for most psychologically damaging moments I've ever seen in common writer because his dad had the zero one driver all along and had a, and wanted to have a death match with his son just so that he can give it back to him. Why didn't he just give it back to him before? Like, seriously, it would have made things a little bit, it would have made things a little easier for him, but I'm sorry, it feels like they just wanted to give him trauma. Mind you, when they defeat another Ichigo, time would be restored to how the way it was to begin with. So, it's like they wrote that in just to give him trauma. Just what the heck? So, overall, this movie was fine. I don't find it awful, but I also don't find it to be groundbreaking. As I've just went over it, there it's good de there it's good details and it's bad moments. Its best moments are with Aruto and his dad. Their relationship and him wanting to find out what was going on with his dad. That I thought was great because after learning that, he learns about what a common writer is. But the ultimate lesson being he shouldn't have to follow anyone. He should become his own common writer and do things his way. Could have, and they could have done that without him having to kill his dad, but you get what you get. And that, and that for Aruto, that makes sense because he is the first of the Reiwa era. So he is the one to start off things in a new direction, but never forget how this whole franchise began. Common Riders are something that were probably used for something darker, but through one's own will, they became something better for everyone, including themselves. And so that's pretty much my thoughts of this movie. It's not bad, but it's also not great in my opinion. It's like, to, now the last movie I watched was the Gates Majesty movie, and I kind of like the Gates Majesty movie a bit more compared to this. But this movie is not terrible. It's totally watchable. Good drama, good action. A pretty different type of tone that you don't really see in Tokusatsu. And... If you were to watch this movie, give it a try. You might enjoy it. And hey, you probably might enjoy it more than me. And with that said, thank you guys for watching. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, share this video, and tell your friends about Comrade Black Man. And I will see you guys next time.